G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Brian Bay Observatory. This is a really tight shot of my face because my kitchen is messy and uh, the mic wasn't working so I've got this shot mic up here. But anyway, the video today is about a new camera. I just got this in the mail. Uh, let me show you, check it out. This is the new QHY53715, the 53 series of planetary and guiding cameras and this one is super high resolution really tiny little pixels we'll get into that a bit later what I want to do is test it for them this is not sponsored by them I don't get to keep this it's just a test unit so let's have a look at what's in the box and go from there my name is Dylan O'Donnell you're watching Star Stuff little box as usual these are the instructions and you know what we do with instructions you don't need the instructions all of that document said was go to the site and download the driver which is an all-in-one driver it's super simple uh, which is the way things should be there she is looking good tiny little sensor there 1.25 inch when I saw in the box that it had USB-C, I freaked out a bit because I don't know if my computer has USB-C ports. Uh, however, there is a regular Type 2 adapter here. So this is actually for the camera end there, USB Type-C in there to make it all nice and high speed. SD4 port, you can burn that. And just the little screws that you need. That's it, nothing more you can say about an unboxing video really. Let's go stick this on the telescope. Now I know what you're thinking. Dylan, the observatory is in broad daylight. Uh, what are you thinking about shooting now? SharpCap has this amazing little feature where you can actually do a full sensor test. So even before you have clear skies, as long as you have a normal steady illumination source you can run a full suite of sensor tests and get some really pretty graphs which make you look really smart okay I'm not gonna bore you I promise you I will get to some stuff through the telescope so you can actually see what this looks like but let me just explain this graph to you this is the sensor analysis results and you can see the ADU versus the gain here this matches what QHY tells us and it's a good way to work out your unity gain which is where one photon equals one ADU uh, analog to digital unit uh, so one photon comes in, it becomes an electron, it becomes a bit, essentially. And we can see that here is around 10. That matches what QHY tells us. Now the read noise graph is a little less intuitive because you would think the noise would be going up, not down as you increase the gain. But it's actually in relation to the signal itself. So the signal is increasing as it gets multiplied at the ADU converter. Effective read noise comes down. Weirdly, it jumps up at the end here and that does not match what QHY shows on its graph. So maybe I have a uh, faulty ADU converter here or something, but more likely it's probably because I don't know what I'm doing. But it's interesting, right? You should do this test on all your cameras, pay the few bucks for SharpCap and just run the test and see if it matches what the supplier shows on their website. Okay, would you rather I put the QHY715C on this $7,000 Celestron 11 inch Edge HD with 2800 millimeter focal length? Or would you rather this tiny little inexpensive ZWO with a focal length of 120 millimeters? Yeah, I thought so. And here we go, that is one long extension. And holy crap, look how close we are on the moon. Now this is a tiny, tiny chip on a really, really big telescope. So obviously we're going to be way oversampled and I'll, I'll show you what that means in a moment. Uh, but for now, just appreciate how small of an area this view of the moon that we have is. Because it is oversampled, it's not as sharp, and I've got a lot of atmosphere here. You really need top-notch seeing for this sort of accommodation to work. Oversampling is fine, it doesn't matter, you can be a little bit oversampled, but these tight details aren't going to be as fine as they would be. However, you can see here at 100%, I am zoomed in 
So before we were actually seeing like a 40% view as it zooms out to fit on the screen. But even then I was able to stack and process a small image. Now this is an okay photo of the moon, but it's not great. And why isn't it great? A few reasons. Uh, if you're using a mono camera like I normally do, you'll always get better quantum efficiency, better detail because you're using all of the pixels instead of a third of them and then aggregating them later with color, which is what happens with RGB. Also the seeing wasn't great, but one of the other really important factors here is that this camera isn't designed for these massive focal lengths. Uh, what's happening is that it's oversampled quite dramatically. But essentially it means that the camera's tiny little pixels are capable of picking up more detail than the telescope's maximum resolution will allow. And we can check that by running this through the Bintel calculator. Now Bintel is the sponsor of today's video, so thank you Bintel. Uh, we've been working closely together for years and years. In fact, as an Australian, it's where I get all of my stuff. They ship really, really quickly. And I know this because I look after their website. What I really like about the calculator is that I kind of built it for myself, but now people all over the world are using it. You can combine all of these different combinations of cameras, telescopes, and even eyepieces if you're a visual astronomer to see what it's gonna look like. And more importantly, it does all the calculations for you so that you can see exactly how many arc seconds you see per pixel. And that's really important to determine whether the images that you get are going to be sharp, oversampled or undersampled. Just for fun, I added this randomizer button so you can click the I'm feeling lucky button and it will just generate a random combination of telescope and camera. And there are some crazy combinations. If you want to see what it's like to put this QHY715C onto like a plane wave, uh, you, you can, you shouldn't do that. And this is what I'm trying to explain right now. But if you are an Australian and you are after astronomy gear, Give Bintel a shout, they're always happy to help. They're a great team and thank you for sponsoring this video. Have you guys noticed that I have COVID? Uh, my voice is weird, my throat hurts, uh, but generally I'm fine. Thanks, vaccines. All right, let's try again, shall we? Select your player. Would you like Big Mama over here? 2800 millimeter focal length, or knowing everything I've just told you, about how this planetary and guiding camera does well with short refractors. Uh, how about we go for the little ZWO guide scope here. Let's see what we can do. What did you think? Honestly, for a $130 telescope and a very cheap camera as well, uh, this is pretty capable. I mean, obviously it's piggybacking on a monster, uh, but the true application of this sort of camera is not to replace your deep sky camera or anything like that. It's really a planetary camera and a guider, and this would go really well on a bigger refractor. However, this is a really interesting use case for me. I've put a little um, ball head here 
so that I can align it with what the telescope's looking at and it becomes a digital finder scope to replace the finder scope I've got up here. Now for me that means that's another reason I don't have to come outside, especially if I'm looking for a planet or looking for something small like Eta Carina or something like that, which is very hard on the big scope when you're zoomed in. I can use this without leaving my seat inside. Yeah, it's essentially another finder scope but digital, which is great. And that's not the only application of this very versatile little camera. It also comes with a wide angle lens if you want, almost like a fisheye lens so that you can do all sky photography. And of course you can use it as the guider as well. So I'll probably put this in the mix as a guide scope in future, um, possibly binning at that point because I don't need color for guiding and binning will just increase the signal and it should work great even working at f7 with the off-axis guider. But we'll see how that goes later. So, expect to see this cool little camera from QHY in my mix in the next few videos. And thanks for watching, thanks for QHY, and thanks for the sponsor of this video, Bintel. Give them a shout. Tell them I sent you. And uh, yeah, my name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. And remember, everything is meaningless, and we're all going to die.